in Kenya, this was almost like the pioneering stage or the beginning stage of yeah. corporate Kenya's relationship with creative. Yes. Especially urban urban music. Mm. You mentioned Klepto. Mm. Bro, when did Klepto check in? Klepto, 2000 and... 2000 and... Two. Klepto, yes, checked in in 2002. But at that point, my interaction with them was very, very minimal. I think I only actually used to interact with Kolo. Because mm. you know, Kolo was the more outgoing one. Yeah. Then later on, I became tight with Roba. In fact, funny enough, in terms of the three of them, I was more tight with Kolo and Roba than Nyash. <laughs> but because Roba became my neighbor in South B, mm -hmm. then Kolo was just Kolo. Mm. He mm. was just, you mm. know, because Kolo is the, is the outgoing one. Mm -hmm. Nyash was very introverted mm. so yes we would interact but not talk as much mm. but i think at some point he respected or rather he he was fascinated by the things that i would tell them or, and tell ogopa just based on me reading things from the source and vibe, <laughs> yeah, and source you know, and vibe no ah, those things were very <laughs> important to me so um i think I think there's a gig we did with them when I was at home, boys. Yes, there's a gig we did with them when I was at home. Now with Klepto. With Klepto. Then in 2000 and... So I left in 2004. In, in 2004... No, wait. Let me tell you about another interaction with an, with a, with an artist. Ogopa artist. 2003 when I was still at Homeboys. Mm. If I remember correctly, there was a gig on Saturday, 8th of August, 2003. If that's a Saturday, if you can check. There was a gig that the guys of Insider Magazine had mm. put together. Do you remember that gig? That gig that became a big deal. That gig was called, was it called Rotation? I think it was called Rotation. But the basis of the gig was three major artists. One big Kenyan artist, one big Ugandan artist, one big Tanzanian artist. Yo. A Ugandan artist, Chameleon. Kenyan artist, Red Sun. Tanzanian artist, TID. Ay, 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 and that ay, ay. is the day when TID's name got spoiled in Kenya. Do you remember that? No. But, but this era, 2001, 2004, I was not in Kenya a lot. This time, Caroline Toko was the big time presenter on Kiss FM. Mm -hmm. And I think this gig was sponsored by Kiss FM. Kiss FM was so angry about that gig. Let me tell you. So this is what happened. There was a miscommunication about chums. Mm -hmm. There's one thing that, and I up to today, I still struggle communicating it with artists. When you go to a gig, you have two clients as an artist. You have the client that is paying you, mm -hmm. and you have the audience, audience. Yep. that is there to watch you. You can afford to lose this client if you call Sana, because there are many other clients. But that audience, uh -uh. you can't. Mm -mm. You're the ones who, who are paying you. TID was a big deal in TZ Music Nini. That's the time when he had just released Zeze. <whistles> TID was a big deal. So TID is the closing guy. No, actually, I think. Me? No, I don't know if TID was supposed to be the closing guy, but he ended up being the closing guy. Mm. Mainly because he hadn't been paid his balance. Either he, Wait, either he hadn't been paid his balance or he had been paid a smaller amount with the understanding that, no, you will just perform for a short time. Mm. But 
people went for that gig to watch to city, JD. Yep. We've seen Chameleon because mm. Chameleon spent a lot of time in Kenya before he went to UG. Mm. We've seen Red Sun and we are going to see Red Sun. Again, yeah. But TID is new here. Way. TID got on stage and performed, I think, 8 or 12 minutes and went off. Kenyans were annoyed. Oh, I had heard of that. <coughs> Kenyans were annoyed. And for me, that taught me that lesson of... You have two audiences. You have two clients. Two clients, yeah. Mm. Client. You have two clients. And the way you the way you get annoyed with one client, you Is can't take it out on uh -huh, the others. Uh -huh. Like, let me tell you, in fact, for me, the lesson became, eh, that anger that you have because of this client, go and kick us in that to the other audience, to the other client, the mm. audience. Mm to show this client that they are underestimating you. Mm. Just show them what you can do. Be the guy to shine at that gig. Mm. This artist, this uh, client will respect you. So him, he said, me, you ah, paid me this, you may talk. Hey, simply say, my, do you hear Kenyans were annoyed. It was, those days there were no trending topics, but <laughs> yeah. if you look at it, it was a trending topic like the whole week. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Da, 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 da. Mm. Okay. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that, so 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 that was that time I'd started now interacting with Red Sun. Even Red Sun, you had this because of that gig. Okay. I actually did some work with Red Sun later on. I'll tell you about it. That's two thousand and five. So two thousand and four, I leave Homeboys. We start this thing with the uh, Bandsoft. As we are doing it, I'm also hustling for other things. So I meet Amani Maranga. Amar, Amani Mani. Yes. I meet Amani Maranga and in our interaction. Amani is the one who told who is the first guy hmm. who told me hmm. the true consequences of sex is school fees. <laughs> <laughs> so Amani, I met him through Big Ted. Mm. And see, I used to work with Big Ted Kitambo before. Yeah. So we became pals with Amani. Now something I learned from Amani was the hassle of doing stage management. Mm -hmm. So now, when when I left when I left Homeboys, and as we were doing my music, I used to hustle for to do jobs for stage management. Mm. Now, she also knew Big Kev, the late Big Kev. Yeah. So 2004, Big Kev calls me and tells me, "Faki, we are doing this big gig, <clears throat> and it's so big that we need different people. Mm -hmm. So I need you." to come and be a stage manager for one of the stages because we are doing a big gig with three different stages running at the same time. What? Different DJs, nini nini. So, yeah. So I go. I think I was even being paid just 10K that day. But for me, it wasn't even about the money at that mm. point. It was about, let me show Keva what I can do so he can call me because Keva at that time used to do so many other gigs. Mm. Oh, also that time, see, I used to take, I started, no. That, that happened later when I started taking artists around for gigs. Um, so I used to, so so doing the gig with Keva. Um, Big Kev. Big Kev. Oh. So this gig was pushed in a big way. We went, we at the gig. See me, I'm manning my stage. The other stage is happening on this side, the other stage is happening on this side. Ni, 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 ni. So on radio, because now we all had radios, on radio you hear, oh, Hey, there are so many guys trying to get in at the gate. Oh man. Hey, there'll be a problem. So someone can he, so now the the way you do events is that you ensure that within your circle of radios, you make sure that all parties to the gig have radios where you're all communicating. Mm. So as we are communicating, there's someone from Kani on the radio frequency. Mm. There's someone from the client side on the radio frequency. There's someone from internal security of Kani and external security of Kani on, on radio. Mm. So we are hearing all these things of people are trying to come in and it's a mess. So I think, I don't know if it's Misumi, but someone made a call and said, just open those gates because people are rushing. Because mm. you see now, what's happening is, there's been hype about the event. Guys are outside trying to get in. 
because you didn't expect those numbers, the line is moving slowly. Mm. So the guys there are getting anxious. They want to get in. Mm. So they start pushing. Then, of course, there's those guys who just want to get in for free. Yep, so yep, they're yep. hoping that they'll break the barriers and go through. So someone makes a call and says, open the gates. So when they open the gates, so yeah, people rushed. come in. So yeah. at least it eases the pressure at the gates. But now there are many people at Kani, Kani Gardens. So the gig continues, guys are having fun. So me, I'm, me, I'm at my stage. I'm backstage, I'm coordinating which DJ goes after which DJ after which DJ, like that. In the morning, when guys have gone, we are clearing, then now you start hearing things on the radio. So even if you wanted to go home, you're like, hey, no, wait, what has happened? So you hear a body has been found. Mm. You hear CG. Hey. There was an incident before where someone had been rushed to Hosi. So you're told, okay, that person has died. Aye, 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 that aye. was man of experience. Man of experience, yep. Let me tell you, it was such a dark time for the industry. I remember months later seeing Kina Misumi, Kina Keva, Kina. There's a chick who used to be the Tusker brand manager at EABL. She was called Caroline. Caroline, someone. I think she was Bob Kiyoko's chick. Mm. Seeing them being dragged to court to explain that thing. Eh? But what that taught people, okay, at least taught me about being calm, thinking of safety before money, mm. was that thing of just open the yep, gates. Yep, yep. It could okay. have been worse. It could have been worse. Mm. Um, I mean, it was extremely bad, mm. uh, but it could have been worse. It's so funny. I came actually came for that gig. Mm. One of the few Kenyan gigs I've come for. Mm. Remember Shanky Radix? Yes. Bambika Bambika yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. thing was big at that time. Mm. So we came with them mm. and we stood and we watched a sea of people just moving mm. left and right, mm. left and right, mm. left and right. Mm. And I just knew hey, this is insane. Mm. So it, it's, it's a gig that taught people a lot. But also it endeared me a lot more to Keva to the point where I would later on easily talk to Keva and say, oh, Mazi, I'm representing a number of artists Suko, under the Ogopa stable, so can we talk about your gigs calendar? Mm. So Keva would either talk to me, Ama he'd, 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 he'd tell me to talk to Jackie, and we'd sit and we go through their gig calendar, then, we, then I tell him, uh, here, can you give us this one? Can you give us this one? Nee, 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 nee. So he, they give me that. Then they tell me here, there's this budget here, there's this budget. So me, I go to Francis. I tell Francis, uh, there are this number of gigs. These are the budgets. Whoa. Now then Francis has to sit with Lucas and they see from their plan, who do they want to put out? Who are they ready to go around the country? That, I, I can't believe a record label like this existed in this country. Yeah. This is such a prof where it's business, literally business fast, mm. but the creativity helps the business also get to where it's supposed to get to. And because at that time, Keva used to do big gigs for big clients. Remember Keva? Keva is the one who, used to first, who first started the first Safaricom roadshows, Tamasha roadshows. Here's where I do an advert. <laughs> Big Kev. <laughs> no, this is Big Kev, the one who passed on. Oh, this is this is this is true black. This Kev. is true black. Oh, not Big Ted. No, this Big is Big Kev. Kev. Yes. It's so funny. They, the true black have actually asked me to sit down and have a full conversation about Big Kev. Different people mm. are willing to come and talk. Mm. I think I should take that up mm. now mm. after hearing this. Big Kev was a very big pillar. Big Kev. Big Kev is is one of the guys. Remember Big Kev used to be a pro presenter on Capital FM doing a radio show called Ethnic Fusion mm. that was heavily, if not 100% Kenyan. Yo. So Big Kev was a big believer in Kenyan. So remember when Safaricom started in the year 2000, mm -hmm. Big Kev, True Black, is the one who used to do the first ever Safaricom roadshows, Tamasha roadshows. Yo. Tamasha roadshows. This is insane. I didn't know that. We used to do those, you know Eric Kivasu at yes. Safaricom? Yeah. We used to do those road shows with, with him, Uko, True Black. Hey, this is... Fakian, to ask you something about 
this mine of experience and not to mm. bring back dark memories but to look at it from a different perspective mm. this thing had a lot of kids mm. and the reason why i'm asking this did the effect of kenyan music mm. have an effect to the amount of people and demand for this kind of events was there something a shift happening within the industry that you feel maybe led to such a high demand and the entertainment scene in general to be honest i think especially that gig number one remember this was man of this was ebl mm. so they went into media guns blazing so they did the whole media shebang radio tv newspaper billboards mm. nini street team and keva was the guy of street team and no one no one did street teams like keva mm. Mm. you know and number two i think if i'm not wrong this gig was on december 4th leave us something exactly yes it 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 was yeah. it was mm. so okay. that 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 was the big factor but the way that let me tell you the way it had been pushed like this gig ended up having that effect of like if you're not there what's up honestly <laughs> where where are you <laughs> yeah. what are you doing yeah. and you can imagine get a finishing from four get yeah. a closing score. okay i get it so all the way in high school when guys are in third term at that point they know December Saturday fast mm. to Nanda yo. Okay. That, that I get that. Okay, so continue so, so continue with this. And journey. by the way remember this time eh? I think if I'm not wrong this gig was just DJs eh? No no artists. There were no artists on stage. Mm. But the DJs were of course heavy in terms of playing local local yeah. mini. And I think that was one of the first one of the first gigs where homeboys a beat used different names for the different DJs remember homeboys yes, used to yes, yes, homeboys yes. DJs yeah. but now it was there's John on this side there's G who on this side mm. this who on this side brand yeah. names are becoming a thing within yeah. homeboys yeah okay yeah um, so so the, the, I, I want to ask this question i've had you mention klepto but does your relationship i heard that you were their manager mm. Ama, this is later on um i became their manager in 2000 Four, five, and it was right after, or or just around, when they were launching their album, and for E, and for E. Mm. So, I remember, I put. So you see, remember this time, while I was working with all these artists. You see, when when I was when I was working as Nyash's manager, mm-hmm. I was reporting to him. Mm-hmm. That time when I was working with all these artists I was reporting to, to Francis. Francis I get So you see as much as yes I can say I'm working with so and so but that they're not your boss they're not my boss I'm reporting to Francis So in 2005 April I helped Francis to put together a joint album launch and we did a gig at Carnival called Klepto versus Longombas <laughs> yes. 2005. Um I think even in the same year I helped Red it was the same year or the year after I helped Red, Red Sun launch his album Post Ogopa. Mm. Anyway, so we started now major interactions Klepto versus Longombas that time 2005. When was the Isa album launch? <clears throat> No, this album launch we had already done when I was at Homeboys mm, mm. the year before 2003 I think. Yes, 2003. Is when we did the album launch. No, wait. The one after he passed on. Wasn't his album launch after did, he passed on? We did it in 2004. Carnival. Carnival. Was it August? I can't remember. But of course you but you were involved in yeah, that. Yeah, I was involved. I was involved. Okay. I was involved heavily heavily heavily. Um then those are those I those are those are significant happening the next year 2005 so we are still going on with with my music with the uh, band soft mm-hmm. and I'm still doing these other things Oh yes 2005 in August I remember some day 
um, we had gone with Bansoft. I can't remember to do what, but I remember. We were either coming from Arusha or something, and we were driving back into Nairobi, and we had just taken the turning of Athi River onto Mombasa Road. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just at that point, and I always remember it when I passed there, I was driving. My small sis called me. She called me. Then she told, we had been talking the morning. But when she called me at that point, I swerved the car. Why? Then I parked. Then Bansoft asked, I think Bansoft was even asleep. So he woke up and asked me what's going on. So that's when my sis had told me, my elder sis had oh, just passed on. Man. Let me tell you, my world ended. It was, I was like, my sis, because of her love for writing mm. that led us to start a magazine, mm is what ended up pushing me into this entertainment industry. Mm. Now she's gone. Away. Let me tell you. A difficult moment was me trying to call my mom, who was in Mombasa, telling her, come to Nairobi, but I don't want to tell her why I'm telling her to come to Nairobi. Okay, 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 okay. Let me tell you. My mom later on told me she knew when I told her come to Nairobi. Because who am I to tell my mom come mm. to Nairobi? Mm. Let me tell you, for several months, I'd said, F entertainment, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm. It. Whew. Whew. Mm. it messed me. It messed me. You guys were tight. It messed me. The prob the, the, the major problem at that time. Sorry. No, it's good. Do you have no no no? Do you have a get get from over there? Hey Paul. <laughs> 